Hey, thanks, and uh, welcome back to the channel. What I'm going to cover here in a three-part series is a tutorial and an application, all source code, on how to build a CRUD application using Firebase, using the Ionic modal as our uh, input form, uh, integrating form validation in the Composition API. So you'll be able to um, get a list of objects, you'll be able to add new objects, delete new objects, validate the fields in the object, and save the object to Firebase in the back end. Uh, we'll use, as I said, Composition API, so we'll create a uh, hook, for lack of a better term, for user authentication and keeping track of the user. We'll create a hook for manipulating the data, and we'll package all this up using the new uh, View 3 and the new Ionic Framework components. Uh, make sure you um, subscribe so you can get notified when parts 2 and 3 are posted, and time to get to the coding. So let's get to the code. So first we're going to use the default ionic start uh, command. Uh, make sure you use the view beta tag on the end if things aren't going to work the way you want to work. Um, got a simple hyphen modal hyphen hap is the name of my project. I'm not going to deal with the uh, capacitor download now because it takes a little bit of time and we're just really trying to walk through some code here for you. Okay, so clearly I cut that off, so you don't have to sit here and wait, but um, it's downloading all the dependencies and libraries, and now let's uh, open up Visual Studio Code and get to the good stuff. So here we are in code. Uh, let's clear out all the default stuff, because we don't need any of that. We're going to put all our own content in there. Um, also along the way here, uh, there'll be times I'm going to hop over importing all the components, because um, if you started working with Vue yet, you recognize that you need to first load in all the imports, and then after you load in the imports, you gotta add the components, and it just kind of is time consuming. So I'm gonna skip over that. But I will provide all source code at the end. So here we are now, we are just going to create a simple button inside of the home page here. And that button is what we're gonna to use to show you the modal. So as I said in the beginning, the idea here is to demonstrate the basic use of the modal component inside of a Vue.js app. Uh, using view 3 in Ionic. Um, the first part we will set up the modal. The next part we will show you how to use the modal to edit, uh, to create objects and to edit objects. And then in the last video we will integrate it all to Firebase. And we're going to manage the state um, of the modal information also along the way. So now um, we're using the new uh, setup capability or kind of function with Vue.js. Um, and we want to bind specific objects to the uh, excuse me, in the past as we would use data, so you can get access to them in a the template. So one of the things we definitely want is you need to have this function called show modal, which will respond to a button click to hide and show the modal dialog. So that's what the show modal function is gonna be, but we also need a state variable to actually hold the modal, not, uh, whether or not you're gonna hide or show the modal. So let's uh, create that now. Um, we're gonna make it reactive. I'll put a link to kind of explain a little bit more what's going on with reactive, but I usually use it with objects. And so this reactive object, I want to keep track of um, whether or not we're showing the modal or not. So it will just be a true or false uh, Boolean property. Um, later, we're going to use the data value, and that's going to be related to passing in initial values into our modal. So now let's create our modal component. I'm going to cut and paste the basics of this directly from um, the example that exists in uh, view, in the um, Ionic documentation around view, and I'll also paste that link below. Um, so, as you can see, we have the basic ion page, ion header, ion toolbar, ion content. You know, um, that's what you need for your page. Be sure that you import all the components and that you expose the components inside the um, defined component module or else things just won't work. I mean, I've been burned multiple times where I've entered the tag inside the template, but it just doesn't work. And so you want to make sure that you account for that. And so as you can see here, I'm going to pull the actual source from the documentation on how to get this thing going. Um, I'm using the um, one where you embed the component directly in the template. The other example where you use the create seems to not be working. I have logged an issue um, in the Ionic documentation. I mean, in the Ionic GitHub repo. So now we pasted that in. Um, so... The next part after you paste it is, as you can see, I need to import all of these um, Ionic components that we just used above. So there you go. I have them imported. Now we need to actually use them. So you can see the little yellow squiggly line says, yo, you imported all this stuff, but you're not using it. 
So let's add the um, components tag inside of the uh, component. So there we have our components. And now the red squiggly line says, hey, you're not using any of these items. So we'll remove these items and get this page cleaned up. Let's first name my component. Um, we're going to name it simple modal. Keep it simple. And um, that needs to be quoted. So let's put that in quotes. And then now let's remove this specific um, components Ionic components that we're not using here. Let's format this and see what we got. Let's replace this open ref with a property that we are going to pass in from the parent. Because as you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm creating a component that wraps the ion modal component. And then we're going to manage the state and we're going to manage the on dismiss inside of our simple modal component. So that's going to be a property that we need to get passed in from the parent. So let's make sure we define this property and with this new setup approach, you have uh, what you get passed into your setup is props and in context. And so we're going to use the property that gets passed in. And I think that we call this property is open also. So yes, let's put is open in there. So we get this uh, property in. What I'm, I'm going to do here is I'm going to go a little bit extra and I'm going to actually define uh, the property, define the type. And um, not the type, but I'm going to find the property with the name. Um, and then we can add some additional information. So I'm going to say its uh, default value is false because we don't want the menu to show by default. I mean, the modal show by default, and we'll make it required. Uh, so there you go. I'm trying to show some other interesting things that you might run into when you're looking at sample code. Okay, props isn't defined yet, but we'll, we'll utilize it later. Um, the way properties work is by default they're injected, so I don't necessarily need to in here force it um, to return the property so you can use it in the template. It's accessible to the template by default because you define the property. So for this, all we're really going to do is um, on the dismiss, we're going to display an alert that says dismiss. This on dismiss is an event that's once again is triggered by the ion modal. Um, anytime you close a modal, if you close it by clicking on the outside or if you close it by, um, you know, setting a property to false, we will close it. It will call that handler. So we're going to do some in, something interesting later to address that. All right. So we are back in my home page. We are now importing the uh, component. And um, what was that? Okay. We're importing the component, um, which we will now also add to the list of components that we're using on my home page mm, why is it not happy why is it not happy oh that's it all right let's add the component to the page which has a simple model and we if you remember we have two properties we have the is open property that we're going to set based on um, our modal info uh, property that we are returning from my component where is that joint it is uh, that reactive object right there at the top, modal info. And so we got to make sure we return it. So we return modal info, which will give us access to it in the template. Let's fix my spelling area error because it should be a capital modal I, capital I, and FO. And get that in there. I can't type, I have fat fingers. Okay, so back up here. Why is my simple modal? getting the red squiggly lines. Uh, let's fix this up here first. So we're gonna have the modal info dot show because that's a property that will determine if we hide or show my simple modal. And we're gonna wrap it there. Uh, but we're still getting that import issue. Simple modal, I need to put the dot VUE on the end there. All right, there you go. Now our modal, but why is our modal showing when it should not be showing? That isn't right. The is modal set. Well, let's switch it to kind of follow the view approach where you have kind of the hyphen instead of the camel case. You can see I found out what the issue was, was that I had an incorrect version of Ionic View. I needed to upgrade to the 0.5.0 version to get the fix. And so now you can see my modal's gone. And then when I click, my modal shows. But I don't have a way to get rid of it yet. So let's add a button. Remember the hyphen version, not the camel case. Let's add a button to my page, which will close the modal. And the way that we close the modal is we're gonna to need to set that property to false for the is open. So let's put our click handler in 
and then based on our click handler we will for now let's just call our handle did dismiss we'll use that as a short term solution but we'll add some oh, let's do it now we're going to create a new function called handle did handle did dismiss and because we're going to want to do some more interesting things inside of that function so instead of just hanging it off the return object let's actually create our function and one of the things you want to do in a function is we want to handle the modal differently when it's canceled versus when I actually am going to save data because as I mentioned earlier on we want to use the same modal for adding objects and removing objects and editing objects so if I'm editing an object and I hit cancel I want the parent to know I canceled so don't do anything with the data I returned um, if canceled is if is canceled is false then that means hey I'm giving you back some data let's do something with it so just to kind of get you started on that we're gonna have our handle did handle did dismiss work with this canceled boolean <clears throat> and we'll keep track of when it's uh, set as true or false and for now we'll just kind of log it so but one of the things that we need to do is we need to emit this event back to the parent and so the way you emit that event is you need to call emit and the way you get access to the emit function is from the context which is passed in through the setup so we're going to do our ctx with our context emit we're going to create our new event that we're emitting which is called modal close and the data for now that we're going to just pass back is the is cancelled flag so what that means whoever's listening for this modal close event will get passed an object that has the value is cancelled and whether it's true or false so that's what we just did there with that code Remember, the link to the code will be accessible. And so um, now we need to handle our modal close event, which is emitted. And then in our parent, we're going to have a function called handle modal close, which will be the listen for the event that's triggered. Um, and of course, we need to return that from our setup. So we'll put that there. And then now let's actually write the function. And this function, all we're going to do is we're going to move the alert that we were um, showing before to inside of our handle modal close and it's just a placeholder for now um, we're going to put some more functionality inside of this function but this first video is just to get you started and have um, a baseline for you to build upon so this handle modal close will get passed in that object that the event emitted and we're just going to render that for you in an alert and Let's check our code to see are we ready. We got our modal close. We have our is open, which is getting passed in and out. And I think that we have the basics in place. But let's do a JSON stringify on this so that we get uh, some output that's worth, that makes sense to us instead of just the object object. So let's do a JSON stringify on the event data that comes back. That should make it more readable. Now everything looks like it's in place. We pass our is canceled, we pass our modal close. Um, that looks good. Next up is, we what we wanna do is, we wanna handle on a close, um, is canceled, we're passing that in as false because it's canceled as false on a close, but on a, on dismiss, so that's when someone clicks outside of the box, is canceled is true. So that's why we wanna keep, keep track of that. And so let's go down inside of here and get the modal info. We want to set it to false when you cancel it. And so that's going to force the property to get passed back into our parent, which will then cause the modal dialog to hide. Oh, that was some weird outside sound. Okay. Um, so now we have everything working properly. Hold on. Let me just reload this to get everything straight uh, and then one of the things you want to do is um, you want to test when you click outside of the box so if your windows larger then what you'll see sorry if your windows larger than a modal dialog um, it's possible for the user to click around the modal to actually close the modal window and so the handle did dismiss will get called uh, when the user clicks on the outside and it, when the user clicks on the outside, if the modal is still open, we do want to go through this process of emitting the modal closed event. But remember, handle did dismiss will also get closed when I click a button to close the dialog. So what I'm doing in my code is I'm going to check and see if my modal is open, 
then actually do something. If my modal isn't open and this is getting called after I closed it through a button, um, just ignore it and return. There might be a more elegant way to handle it. That's the way I'm handling it here. So um, you should see now when I open it and if I click outside, it knows it is canceled true and it only calls it once. If I close here, it knows it's canceled false and it only calls it once. Um, you're only going to run into that if you're not using it on a uh, mobile device. If you're using it on a mobile device, there's no space around the modal for a user to click on the cold, uh, for the user to click on it to close the dialog, so you should be safe. But I just wanted to account for that edge case in case um, someone actually used it inside their code. So I, I think that we've now covered um, everything that I wanted to cover. Let's change this and let's put a cancel box in here so we can actually cancel our dialog also, um, which is something else you'll see as opposed to clicking outside the box. And now you have the cancel and on cancel, we want to return to false also. So that's uh, how we get that going. So it looks like we've covered all the stuff we wanted to cover in this first version of the video. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. Please make sure you stick around in the second part of the video. We're going to actually add some form fields um, using either Vulidate or View or V, v Validate. Um, and we'll show you how to use the modal dialog to create um, data and to edit data. That'll be the second video. And then the third video will integrate Firebase to allow you to, um, first of all, log in and log out, and then also save the output to a database. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you come around for the next one. And uh, thanks for sticking with me. Take care. Bye now.